Okay, following on our proving ground, which was all about compositing. This is our last compositing skills project. And we use it in a fun way. We use digital art's ability to perfectly copy pixels for just the most natural use of it, which is to make duplicates and then alter the duplicates a little bit to play in sequence and create an animation. In this, we're going to showcase a transformation animation, starting one way, moving through, and ending a different way. And then if we're elegant about it, we're going to set it to reset. So as the GIF animation plays on an endless loop, it doesn't just have a jump cut at the end. It kind of moves easily in and out. We're going to see some past examples. This will help make sense. So one of the requirements is that you need to use some pixels that you have previously created in the class. They could be your emoji. They could be your landscape. They could be your creature. They can even be your line art jumble. And you can use multiples of those. Like this uses the landscape and the creature. This just uses the emoji. This uses the landscape and the creature. If we want more examples, we can go to the Imgur and see students that put this in their final portfolio. There are three components we're going to be submitting for this. This is a, a little bit more involved. And it's kind of our ultimate use of layers and file organization. We're going to submit a storyboard sketch, just a rough nine frame storyboard sketch. The GIF animation, which will be a minimum of nine frames, but usually around 50 frames to get everything smooth. And then a refined storyboard, which is where after you're finished with the animation, you take nine moments from it that tell the story like a comic book. And this is how you will show your animation in a print portfolio. Because the animation is meant to be shown on a screen, that will be at screen resolution, which is 8 by 8 inches. And we're going to go a little bit higher than 72. We're going to do it at 100 pixels per inch. But 8 by 8 inches as a square at 100 pixels per inch spread out times 9 is large enough for a print resolution of at least 8 by 10 inches. So let's look at some of these past examples. We have this student using their emoji, starting to swear, getting censored, and then spitting out the censorship, which is kind of wrapping around its mouth. And you can see that as an animation, it's a lot more effective. Right? We get that sense of momentum, of things moving in and out, of the slow color change as the face gets angrier and angrier, the slow tilt of the, the eyes, and of course, the change and transformation of the letters. Here we have one that uses the creature and their landscape, and they use a panning and a zoom. So they start on the moon, zoom out, zoom in. None of that is a transformation. Just zooming around is just a movement. But they show the transformation in their creature kind of growing these, these mystical antlers. And then the whole thing fades to white to set to reset. Here we have nine frames, pretty focused on character. It's a student that maybe wants to really showcase character animation. Using their emoji, an emoji they did for the Lord of the Flies band book. And showing this emoji getting upset. So it's good to think of your sketch in beginning, middle, and end. And I'll show this as I sketch. So in the beginning, the, this character starts to get worried. In the middle, this character gets impaled with a spear. right? And there's a pretty big change in the middle. It goes from being alive to being dead. And in the end, it starts to rot. Right? You'll notice that these three pictures are not very different. So as an animation, they actually created a lot of subtlety where the coloration changes at the end. And they wanted to showcase that. And you're allowed to do this. So in their refined storyboard, they did more than just nine frames. Though I think they still could have done it fine with nine frames. And they instead showed pretty much every frame they created for this animation. And then this is how it worked. Again, movement can add a lot to it, especially the little drips of blood that come out. 
Now this one is just so elegant in its simplicity and it's it's long been one of my favorites. I do wish the sketch wasn't just filling up a sketchbook page. Remember, it's better if you leave some space around for notes and, and to change ideas. But this was the refined storyboard. It's pretty dramatic how much it changes frame to frame, but it gets a slow start. But the idea is a fire starts, it spreads, smoke overtakes it, the smoke clears, starts again. And that can work incredibly well, just as composites. Just a little bit of movement, understanding your layers. Even something as dynamic as fire can be made into a character. This is the one that uses the emoji and just transforms it from beginning to end across nine panels. Well, that's a pretty fast animation, but pretty smoothly executed. Here's one that uses a creature in an environment. This is like tailor-made for internet consumption. On and on and on. This used their fantasy landscape, and then it, it added components like the missile, the explosion, the static. And then this student used their creature and then added components like the skeleton that they drew and then all of the fire. They used kind of a fire texture brush to show it self-immolating and then reversing it. So one way to set your animation to reset is sometimes you can just reverse the order of the frames. Here's just a really, really simple demo that can be done pretty quickly. So your emoji is probably the, if you're really unsure about animating and still not sure about your layers, your emoji might be a good choice because you have really defined shapes to use there. But the emoji ones can get kind of weird and complicated too because you're allowed to do a lot with them. And then characters, you know, we can do a lot with characters. And another nice thing with animation is we can play with timing and like build up to moments. And so here we use a creature in an environment and then I introduce a, a secondary character, you know, this T-Rex. So here's the storyboard, just kind of introducing the character in the environment and then this T-Rex comes and resets it. And again, this is actually a transformation of the environment, like a storm rolls through and kind of dumps some rain. But really nothing transforms about the creature at all. And it starts with a panning move. So hopefully this will give you some ideas, but it all starts with this sketch. So let's get started with this sketch. I'm going to do it in Photopea. And I'm going to be inspired by the animator, the American animator of the British comedy group Monty Python in the 20th century. And this is my favorite one he does, which is all these people are, this is like low res, done with magazine cutouts. All these people are admiring the baby, and then the baby, like, a, like Kirby, just sucks them all in. And then you can see how this could easily be set to reset as well. Instead of jump cutting, you could just reverse the frames and it could vomit them all back out again. It's a, a good traditional analog for, for digital GIF animations because this is not done at a smooth frame rate. We're not going to be creating 24 frames per second, which is what professional animation is done. We're not going to be creating 80 frames per second like a lot of video game animations are done. We're going to be doing something more like 3 to 5 frames per second. So it's kind of clunkier, but shows these transitions in a way that really help us understand the illusion of movement through sequential panels. So the first decision I need to make when I sketch, and you're encouraged to sketch physically or digitally, but just don't be too um, precious about it. Let's see, I want a new file. I want it to be eight by 10 inches. 
Don't ever use the templates in Photopea. Otherwise, you're not able to save all of the features because these are owned by certain different rights. And I'm going to make it by, let's just do it by 300 on white. So this is my default sketch. Pretend this is my sketchbook page. Okay, now create a new layer, use my brush, black on white. I'm going to set my brush to be its typical, slightly soft, slightly less opaque, pressure sensitive. I'm using a tablet. Okay, first thing you need to know is that animation requires three things. Storytelling in general requires three things. Character, setting, and the illusion of time passing. It has to be an illusion because we're not actually creating time. This is done in comic books, this is done in cartoons, this is done in animations all the time, and in film. So character is what you tell the story through. So if you have a landscape, and the thing that changes and transforms is the sky, then your sky is the character. And maybe in particular it's the clouds, or the sun that gets covered up by clouds. That's the things that we experience that transformation through. Put another way. If it's a tree in a field, but that tree gets hit by lightning, then your tree is your character. <laughs> it's the thing that, that we as the audience experience the story through. If it's a character, like an animal running through a forest, then that animal is what we experience that story through. So character is the thing that you are telling your story through, and every story has a character even if it's only setting, even if it's just a desk with a paper clip. If we focus on that paper clip, and then we see shadows changing as the time passes on that desk, that, that paper clip can be a character. We don't need to give it eyes and a mouth and legs. Setting is always there, even when it's empty. When Jim Davis does a Garfield panel and there's just white space behind Garfield, but Garfield has a scarf on, we know that Garfield's outside, even without having to, to draw the, the snow. Setting is always assumed. So we want to control it if we need it for our story. And if we have just an emoji floating on a white background, we just think that this is like the eternal void and this space always exists, right? That would be the setting. And it helps us really pay attention to the character of that emoji. The illusion of time passing can be done in a few different ways, but in animation it's done through a sequence of images. And you play that sequence at a certain timing, and as one image jumps to the next image, what you are passing over in this gutter here is time. So you get to decide, as the storyteller, how much time is passing. It can be a time lapse that shows a year within a second. And that's just how much time you want to jump with each sequential image. Or you can slow down time with this and make it so each change is actually faster than it exists in real time. So we can get like a raindrop hitting the, the ground and slowing it down so we can see each moment. We see more moments than we usually see in ordinary experience of time. So... We want to draw a storyboard that's called a three-on-three -three storyboard. We're using a square because it's the most universal composition for media storytelling. Think of it as posting something to social media. We're not doing widescreen movies, though I have done widescreen as a format in the past. So we want to fit our story within these squares, right? Notice I don't need to draw the squares perfectly. I don't need to take time to, to measure them out. First, we have the beginning, these first three of our rough storyboard. Then we have the middle. Then we have the end. The beginning should introduce us to our character and setting and to the actions that are going to happen. The action overall is going to be a transformation. And in storyboards, you always have gutter space, gutters and borders, so you can write notes. So... I have to figure out what is my character, what is my setting, 